All right, in this video, we want to discuss a group of our immune cells known as granulocytes. So we want to think about why they have this name, granulocyte, what their function is, and then our immune response. And then we'll wrap up with a few key details we want to know about these cells. So granulocytes. Um, granulocytes are a critical component of our immunological second line of defense. That's our innate, one of our innate lines of defense. Nothing special has to happen for these cells to be active and protecting us. Um, granulocytes are all white blood cells, right? Uh, granulocytes have their name because they contain granules in their cytoplasm. And I have an image here that describes that. So here are three microscopic images of different types of granulocytes. And especially in this middle cell, you can see these dark granules that are speckled throughout this cytoplasm. It's true in this far right cell as well, these dark dots throughout the cytoplasm. And then the cell on the far left also has these dots. They're just a little bit harder to see. So all of these cells share this trait of these granules in the cytoplasm, and thus their name granulocytes, white blood cells that contain granules. As we talk about our immune response, we're going to talk about three kinds of granulocytes. So we'll discuss basophils, eosinophils, and neutrophils. So let's think about each of those cells separately. We'll address what they each do, and then we'll think about the core set of traits that we want to be aware of for granulocytes. So let's start with basophils. So here's the image from that panel of a basophil. Again, it's got these granules in the cytoplasm. And here's a more stylized drawing of a basophil. So basophils contribute to a couple components of immunity. All right. So the first thing they do is that they help to facilitate or stimulate inflammation. We will learn, we have learned about inflammation and its critical role in, in immunity. Um, so basophils are a component of that inflammatory response. Basophils also contribute to allergic reactions. So all of these um, granulocyte cells, uh, one of the ways that they act is that they release chemicals to stimulate processes. So basophils release chemicals to stimulate inflammation or they release chemicals to st that stimulate allergic reactions. And the chemicals are actually contained in these granules. And when this cell is stimulated, it releases these granules outside of the cell to um, activate these processes. So that's the role of basophils. They stimulate inflammation and allergic reaction. How about eosinophils? So eosinophils, they also contribute to some processes. Um, but eosinophils are particularly important in fighting viral infections, so they attack viruses. They're also important in fighting helminth infections, and helminths are just worms. So there's all sorts of infectious worms, and these cells combat those infections. Eosinophils also contribute to inflammation, and they also contribute to allergic reactions. So again, all of these cells Together, one of the main ways they function is they release their granules outside, and then those chemicals act to stimulate processes or to harm pathogens like viruses or helmets. But for eosinophils, I want us to really focus on one other key detail, and that is they can fight infection, viruses and helmets, using phagocytic activity. And so we'll address phagocytic activity in just a second. All right, so basophils do inflammation and allergic reactions. Eosinophils add this ability to fight viruses or helminths, and primarily that fighting happens through phagocytic activity. And so let's think about the last kind of granulocyte, the neutrophils. So again, here's a uh, representation of the neutrophil. And again, neutrophils act in specific processes. So neutrophils contribute to fighting bacterial infection. They also contribute to inflammation. And again, one of the ways they function is to release their granules through a process called degranulation. 
and those chemicals can stimulate processes and harm bacteria. But neutrophils, like the eosinophils, primarily act through phagocytic activity. So two of these cells have important phagocytic, phagocytic activity that protects us from infection. Um, neutrophils act as phagocytes on bacteria primarily, and then eosinophils primarily act on viruses and helminths. So let's think a little bit more about that phagocytic activity and what it's doing, or how it works. So phagocytes are a group of cells that all work in similar ways. Their first thing they do is they detect something. They detect these things called PAMPs, pathogen-associated molecular patterns. And they do that using membrane-bound receptors. So I often describe phagocytes as sort of feeling everything they come across inside a cell. And if they feel something abnormal, they might decide that that is a PAMP, a pathogen-associated molecular pattern. It's a pattern of molecules that don't belong inside the human body. So here's a phagocytic cell, and it's got these receptors sticking out of it, and it's feeling these molecules. Um, these are things that do not normally exist on human cells, like peptidoglycan or flagellin. And so these molecules have distinct shapes or patterns or different um, textures that the phagocyte detects as abnormal. Again, it does not belong in the human body. And the phagocyte will be stimulated to engulf and destroy those foreign things that have these PAMPs, pathogen-associated molecular patterns. So again, when that PAMP is detected, the cell, the phagocytic cell, is stimulated, and it acts to engulf the pathogen, digest the pathogen inside something called a phagosome, and then to expel the waste. So here's a diagram of that. This phagocytic cell detected this bacteria because it had a PAMP, a unique molecular pattern that was not normal inside the human body. The cell engulfed the bacteria, then digests the bacteria inside the phagosome, and then the phagosome is filled with waste, which gets expelled from the cell. So that's the general role of phagocytes. And again, granulocytes, one of their primary roles in our immune response is to act as a phagocyte. So we've talked about three kinds of granulocytes and what their role is. Let's summarize what are the basic details about granulocytes we should understand for our level of understanding of immunology in this course. So the first thing is, again, these cells specifically act in the second line of defense. That line of defense is innate, right? It's built in from birth. It works the same in everybody. These granulocyte cells do not need any experiential knowledge. They don't need any sort of training to act to protect us from foreign substances. Any of these cells can detect something that is abnormal in the body, and they will act to protect us from that thing. Again, primarily through phagocytosis, but again, also releasing chemicals that are harmful to that foreign substance. Um, so there's three basic types. Again, we've got the basophils, eosinophils, and neutrophils. All of them contribute to inflammation through the chemicals that they release. But for us, the primary focus I'll, I'll have us um, uh, focus in on is the phagocytic activity of the eosinophils and the neutrophils. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, the phagocytic activity of neutrophils and eosinophils uh, will lead to the destruction of potentially pathogenic microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, and helminths. So they spread the work across some different cells, but these cells' primary role in our second line of defense, this innate immunity, is to destroy, through phagocytosis, potentially pathogenic microorganisms that they find in the body. And if we have that basic understanding for right now, we can build a fuller understanding of our entire immune response. So that's where we'll leave granulocytes basophils, eosinophils, and neutrophils. As always, if you have questions about those cells or what they're doing, please don't hesitate to let me know. 
and I'll talk to you all again very soon.